Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission. Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Here now is your host, Chad Ammond, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Hello and welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections. I'm your host, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce, Chad Ammond. Today we are delighted to have a gentleman with us, Paul Johnson. Paul is with Adelphi Village. Adelphi is based out of Latrobe, and Paul is a foster and adoptive family recruiter. And so uh, Paul's job, well, I'm going to let Paul tell you a little bit about what his job is. Paul, uh, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, tell me a little bit about you and, uh, and what you do with Adelphi and, uh, and, and how you came to be part of their team. How much time do we have, Chad? Well, we have we have seventy four hours. <laughs> uh, well, my coworkers will say that was a dangerous question to ask. Um, I uh, have been in the area thirty five years now. I'm a uh, 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 father of two children, and uh, both are adopted. They're twenty two and twenty seven years old. Um, so that was part of my, I think, inner. Uh, leading that led me to uh, working with children and youth. And so I came into uh, uh, working with Adelphi 17 years ago at one of the group homes uh, in Latrobe, which was our founding uh, location uh, 45 years ago, 46 now. Uh, Father Pascal from uh, St. Vincent College uh, um, saw a need within the community and, and responded by getting some people together, and they started a boys' group home. And that has evolved over 46 years to working with boys and girls, going from working with teenagers to we, we work with infants through 21 now. And uh, um, so providing all kinds of services, educational group homes, and in our case here in our office, which is here mm -hmm. in Greensburg, uh, we work with foster and adoptive children. So you, uh, you, 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 what they say is you, you walk the talk, right? You, you were, uh, you, your, your kids are adopted uh, foster, foster children. Uh, well, technically with the, the two-year-old uh, way back when, <laughs> yeah. uh, that would have been a foster situation. Okay. And our daughter, for sure. Um, for seven years, we um, worked with foster and adoptive children and, uh, um, uh, the first year we did what we call respites, and some people call about that. You know, I don't know if we can make a full-time commitment to children, but are there ways that we can um, provide care and you can become approved family? And, and uh, you know, like all of us, I understand you have children as well. Boy, it would be great if grandma or grandpa were close by and could you take the kids for the weekend? Yeah. And there are families that are willingly um, do that. Um, and then I, we had some full-time, uh, 11 months we had a teenager, and, and then our daughter uh, came into care at 15 and a half. And uh, like many teens, you know, they're struggling with who, who am I, what do I want to do, and that independent drive of theirs, um, I can do this on my own. And like, I mean, I was still living at home at 19, so I don't know yeah. at 15 how, how I would be ready to, to be independent. Sometimes I think I want to move back home. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Mom, I'm not feeling real yeah, good. Right, and then right. you look around and there's yeah. nobody there. Someone to, to make dinner <laughs> and clean for it, right? Right. Well, the, the, yeah. the, the mission, the, the Adelphi Foster Care and Adoption Services, the mission is to assist children, youth, and families to overcome social and emotional and behavioral difficulties. I, I, I understand understand that November is a special month for, uh, for, for, for that purpose, right? Right. Um, nationally, you know, uh, every day is something. Today is probably, you know, take a friend to coffee day or something. Yeah, I, I don't right, know what it right. is. But um, uh, nationally, uh, November is uh, recognized as National Adoption Month. Uh, Mar uh, May is National Foster Care Month. And so agencies and the counties uh, across the country, or across, across the country, mm -hmm. but uh, prim uh, specifically in Pennsylvania, make a real effort to uh, recognize the plight of children. Over 20,000 children a year come into foster care or some kind of out-of-home service across the state. You magnify it um, across the country over 
half a million children are, are out there. And one of the things, we were at a um, quarterly conference two weeks ago, and they had a, a presenter from Office of Children and Youth out of Harrisburg. There are many counties across the state that have more children in care than they have foster homes available. Wow. And one of the things we try to do collectively as agency and county, um, you know, it's, it's traumatic enough to today I was with mom or dad or grandma and something happened, a crisis uh, where my safety was an issue and now the county's involved and they're looking for a family. Well, in our case, we were able to um, be a family within the school district. So the disruption at school with friends, relationships wasn't there or, or remained. Um, but to think that a, a child removed from, and let's just say Greensburg, and between the counties and the agencies, there's not a family and they have to move a county away. Um, it's really, well, that, really that, hard. Well, that, uh, that brings up a question that I have is that, you know, Adelphi celebrated what 45 years just just recently and uh, but you've been doing the foster care for uh, 40 years or more uh, for the people in Westmoreland County they might think that Adelphi Village is just something that's located in Latrobe right. but y you are spread out around the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and and more we provide services um, and contracts with uh, um, pretty well all the counties uh, across the state. Because of our wide continuum of services and programs, we're able to, to meet a lot of needs that some of the smaller counties aren't able to. We're heav heavily uh, engaged in the southwestern um, PA um, counties out of our office, um, but collectively with Altoona and, and Williamsport and a couple in between there, um, we have over 100 families that are approved, and and I think our census is over 170 children. If you were identifying today, how many are in foster adoptive um, uh, facilities or homes? It would be that high, and and as an agency involved in over a thousand kids on a daily basis. You're listening to the Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. We're talking with Paul Johnson. Paul is uh, a foster and adoptive family recruiter for Adelphi Village, uh, based out of Latrobe, but doing work across the uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, Paul, I'm going to ask just maybe the fun most fundamental question. Why is there a need for foster families? Well, um, if you believe what you see on TV and read in the paper, and it's somewhat accurate, <laughs> uh, family, social, social environment, community issues are having a real um, impact on families. And um, I, th I think historically all families have had issues, mm -hmm. but um, the way things are with media and just passing of information, um, we just often probably weren't aware of things. I did, I, in my nine years of being a recruiter, I've talked to probably over 500 families. And when you go, so tell me your own story. And, you know, to be talking to a 50 year old where my parents split when I was three, well, those are th traumas that you went through and yeah. here you are a successful person, but, um, through the support of maybe, um, family, immediately being around and things like that, um, you were able to work through those issues. Now, when you look at family where I'm not sure who my dad was, or there were multiple, or I have three siblings and they're all different parents on one side or the other. Right. And, and uh, um, so that family support wasn't there. And so now um, with, uh, you must be sleeping if you're not aware of um, yeah, the drug right. epidemic and the, and the ripple there, the decisions that, people are making where, well, this is, this is for me and totally, um, not uh, paying attention to what is going to happen to the children and those relationships. Um, at a, again, a, uh, uh, statewide conference, um, two weeks ago, um, the, uh, one presenter who was a state representative said 2,600 infants were born um, this past year uh, with opiate uh, 
addiction. Oh, wow. And so they have to remain in the hospital till their, the blood work shows nothing. And they're not going home with that parent. Mm. And just think of what that means. An infant starting out. Well, and you must be you must be working with other organizations as well because we we just had a a, a woman Don Hennessy on the on the show a couple of weeks ago with Faith Forward where they have this program where the the infants are born with uh, with you know, opioid addiction yeah. and they just need people to cuddle the babies. Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's yeah. it's sad, but it's it's great that somebody is right. doing the cuddling, right. right? And it and it needs to be on such a, a, a multi level agency concerned churches concerned whatever. Um, we're a part of the statewide adoption and per- permanency network as an agency, and there are multiple agencies in our community right here that are all working with for the same goal of providing a, a safe, a nurturing, uh, a caring environment so that children can not only um, have a place to be, but can de- be uh, develop um, uh, what they're meant to be, the, the, the kind of person that they're there to be. So Paul, how many, how many foster families and kids are in the program, or b- approximately? From from ours, um, uh, out of the offices that and the counties that that we have offices in, um, we're we're over a hundred families. Um, I think out of our office right now, we've got like sixty or sixty five, um, and uh, um, over one hundred seventy children uh, being serviced that are um, considered foster or in the uh, adoption process. Out of our office, we do in-home services, which are assisting with the county on sort of like the inner, inner <laughs> the um, uh, a 45 day, uh, let's get in there, the, uh, the, the county, the, the uh, a judge says, you know, um, we see some difficulties, but maybe with just some, uh, uh, active intervention, we can provide, help them find a better, a safer environment, help them with their parenting skills, mm-hmm. helping, help them with finding services so that they can provide for the kids. Because for all of us, our intent is the, the child really needs to be growing up um, in, in that um, family environment that they've known for five years or 10 years or 15 years and work with them and, and keep them there. You, ha- you have 100 foster families, but how many of those foster families take on siblings? I mean, if you, is that a, is that a you, you, do you try not to split up the siblings so that they still have that family connection? Right. Um, the way the way uh, referral works is that uh, you're the county caseworker. Um, you've um, gotten involved in this family situation. It's been a determination that um, things aren't safe, and now the children are at risk. And so um, all of us working together. So the county is making calls to Adelphi and other affiliate agencies, saying, "Look, we've got a sibling group of three. And if you look at in my nine my nine years." Um, the average age of children coming in into care has dropped to five and below, which is just blows me away as a as a sibling of seven, just thinking that they're you know they're at at that level where they're really starting to explore the world. Yeah. And now it's just what they knew has been removed. And the other is um, the the uh, increase in the number of of siblings, um, where we're placing three or four children. Um, that's that's tough, and you, and you, the younger one is two, or right. the younger one is three, and but think of what the eight or nine year old has gone through till someone finally recognized that there's a problem. Yeah, right. You know, right. I, some of those things that that blew up now probably were ongoing for that child. So think of what, what how many people involved in the services are there. We're, you know, we're not doing this. The, the family is not an island. We're, 
Um, we, they have an assigned caseworker. There's a county caseworker assigned to the child. Um, therapeutic services as they're evaluating um, um, the child's um, physical, mental, emotional, social experience and educational. Schools have really stepped up. Uh, individual education um, programs for them, um, doing the assessments. And, and I think we're all recognizing that we've got to do this together. When we get back from the break, I want to talk a little bit more about those therapeutic sessions and the and the counseling that is involved. Uh, you're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. If you have a suggestion for a topic or if your nonprofit organization would like to be featured on this program, call us during regular business hours at 724-216-1200. Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission. Welcome back. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, President of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce, Chad Ammond. Uh, we are pleased to have with us this morning uh, Paul Johnson. Paul is a foster and adoptive family recruiter for Adelphi Village, uh, located in Latrobe, but does work statewide. Uh, Paul, before we went to the break, we were talking... Um, just about some of the some of the issues that the kids have. Uh, talk about some of the the counseling services that if you have a kid that is going into foster care at age nine and has been with with his his birth parents up to that point, I would imagine that my gut would tell me is that that kid, even in a bad environment, it's probably comfortable for him to stay with the parents. So how does how does it all work whenever you take a kid out of their the environment that they've known and put that person that that child into a better environment but it's going to create havoc for them right uh it is and one of the things that uh we challenge our families uh to consider is that um, there's a difference between what we feel are norms that have been established within our family and if we have not been open to other children through uh, our kids be being in sports or school or mm -hmm. clubs or whatever where you observe, wow, that's not how I would respond to my child's behavior in, in a setting like that. But you don't see it as a harmful thing. And now you have a child that's come from uh, a, a crisis environment um, from anywhere from drugs or just um, everything to neglect or, or whatever that became so unsafe for the children that the county stepped in and removed them. Well, when you think of um, a child comes into your home and so they would oh my goodness, we're providing a bed for them and they shared a room with five. And mm -hmm. oh, we have three meals a day and they were, uh, an issue was, um, is someone bringing supper home for us or are we gonna be on our own? Or all the things that um, we think were would be normal things for them could be stressful things. And so the challenge is to um, uh, not look at uh, what the behaviors are of the children, not that we can um, uh, just slough it over and say, oh, oh, that's okay, they were in a fun. Now, to, to get down to the nitty gritty of, um, so what, what happened to them mm -hmm. in the environment they were at that would give us such a, a bizarre um, uh, reaction to what we saw as? Um, I can give an example, we fostered, and. Uh, for seven years, and and uh, so um, the child had um, his own room. Great, he'd been sharing, so that that's got to be cool. Um, and the first night, um, you say good night, get them all tucked in, and is there a is there a light? Can we? Can I have oh, a light on? Right, right. You right. know, and oh, okay, a night light. <coughs> well. You know, it'd been 20 years since we yeah, had a little right, one in, right, our, right, in that right. bedroom. So just what are, what are the little things that make them feel comfortable? 
And so, um, like we would do with a, uh, a relative visiting, we're going to be saying things like, so what do you like to do? What do you like to eat? What do you like to listen to? Do you like being outside? Do you like uh, having a pet? Or what, mm-hmm. you know, and starting to, to find out a little bit more about the environment they were coming from. So services, um, as we, and again, um, if we, ha- we have families that have had children, haven't children, haven't had children, uh, have grandchildren, um, are single, um, have been married and, and now widowed, or just a, a wide variety of people. And from our their personal um, uh, experience, um, are are reacting and making um, uh, decisions for the child um, as to as to what uh, what we see. And so if we're seeing things that uh, bring us concerns, you're a part of a, a, a team. You've got the, your caseworker, the county, and we're going, um, let's, let's do an assessment thing. I'm wondering about um, some of the things that I'm seeing. So there are all kinds of, um, right here within Westmoreland County, that, uh, that uh, work with children at all kinds of different levels. Mm. And so some of uh, the children that we had, you know, a weekly uh, visit with a therapist, just another outside person that with tremendous experience that can mm. say, you know, these are things I'm seeing. These are things um, I think I, that you as a parent, foster parent, um, would be helpful for you. Um, you know, the, I was the, at a train, um, the timeout. Well, I grew up with timeout. They suggested time in. And rather than isolating the child, which maybe is a scary thing for them, right. to you know, they're just right there beside you, and I, I'm here with you. I'm not pushing you away. I just um, let's look at what what caused you to react this way, and are there things that I can provide to you? So, uh, therapy does not change one thing or change things in a day, but it's a, a commitment to. Um, I'm going to be patient with you. I'm observing things. I, I want to let you know that you have a place to be. Um, it's going to be a safe place. I'm providing for you. And hopefully over time, the trust level has increased to the point that they're going to share something that is meaningful to them, um, to you, that you can start to work through you're, with them. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. We're talking with Paul Johnson. Paul is a foster and adoptive family recruiter for Adelphi, uh, based in Latrobe, but do, doing uh, work uh, all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Paul, when you are recruiting um, families that will will agree to a, a, adopt or or to foster a child you you have to be dealing with some amazing people because from what I'm hearing w- with our conversation is maybe the the child would be one or two years old and 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 they're they're still at that point where you can develop them but when you get a kid that is 14 or 15 years old I would assume, because I have a couple of those, <laughs> that they already have their lookout on life. And to go into an environment and an environment of foster care, they probably already have their um, their standards and, and, and what they expect. And so those those folks that are going to be the foster uh, the foster families, have to be special people. How do you recruit them? What what does it take to be a foster family? Uh, a willingness to open their life to investigation, uh, and that's through the requirements it, that it takes to be a foster and adoptive family. Our our responsibility is to demonstrate to the state that it's a stable environment and that encompasses all aspects uh, the safety of the house from the little things like um, for the smaller children electrical outlet plugs a fire extinguisher uh, smoke detector but then the then the family um, all three clearances FBI criminal history um, child abuse and then financial disclosure um, you have to um, 
fostering is not a way to balance your budget. Yeah, well, <laughs> fostering I, I, yeah. We're, we're required. Okay. Their income needs to be exceeding as expenses, and we have to okay. document that. Um, families, uh, um, you have to have a physical. Okay. Uh, free from communicable disease. Um, uh, we're, we're a um, society on medication. Well, that's great as long as we're taking our medication. And so to have a referral from a psychiatrist or a psychologist, it's not an issue. It's just um, uh, we have to make sure that it's a stable environment. And so those kind of things um, uh, are part of the investigation part that I, I um, do when uh, the initial recruitment, um, the family has to go through about 25 um, uh, hours of training. Uh, CPR and first aid are required, and then a number of trainings that are pertinent to to child raising, parenting, child development, those kind of things. And then we have ongoing training. Um, uh, each year a family has to be recertified, so there are ongoing things. And, uh, you know, I said my children are 27 and 22. Um, I wish I would have had the, some of the trainings when uh, uh, our son was two, day, two days <laughs> old when we got him because when he hit eight or nine, he was challenging who I was as a knowledgeable parent. No, that's not how the teacher told us to do that. Right. And math, I thought, was math. You know, well, you have the equal and you do the same on both sides. But that this is new math, Dad. And I think I, I had the nerve to say when I was nine, I was, it's 1964, and they told us it was new math then. So I'm yeah. guessing it hasn't changed. Right. But, uh, they ch you know, the challenge is then, and then you could take the class and go, well, the 8 to the 12, they're seeking their independence. They're going to challenge and you're push the button. I took it all personal. Yeah, right. <laughs> so as a parent, if I would say, uh, what is one of the, the key components of being a parent? It's don't take things personal. <laughs> well, you know, let, let's, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's, as, as, as two dads sitting here, I don't know if you can not take it personal. Right? Um, <laughs> well, talk about this success rate. Uh, you know, what are you seeing? I, I think that we talked about earlier that there are about 100 foster families uh, that are, are working through Adelphi, um, maybe more than 170 kids in, in the care. Talk about the success rate of, of the program. The definition of success, I think, would be to uh, have all parties uh, meeting some kind of personal goal that they had. And so for some folks, uh, expanding their family. We've never had children. In my case, I, I just thought children came naturally. And all of a sudden, you're 35 and 36, and uh, we don't have any children. So yeah. how are we going to approach that? And so some do medical, some do whatever. And so we chose to do um, consider foster and adoption. So that met met part of that goal uh, for us. And then the challenge is to follow through for their till their till they're 70 or 80 or whatever it is. Um, but um, uh, we're finding that um, more children are, and again, I'm just gonna use a nine-year nine reference for me. Um, uh, children are coming in younger, uh, under five, I said. Children are coming in as sibling groups. Um, uh, and more children are, in this past year, um, we had, through Adelphi, uh, 20 children um, adopted who came in um, as foster mm -hmm. um, so some some of the families may that that may be their 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 push because they want to foster the child and then adopt right. but that's not a requirement to be right. a foster family right. right you don't have to to do to move forward with the adoption but it is it is potentially an option right there are multiple goals one of the first one of course is reunification with family so we're working as a foster family mm -hmm. um, provide care for the child in care hopefully on the county end and with whatever we could do for the biological um, to get them to a safe place where the child can be returned um, uh, adoption is is a, a, a concurrent goal because we um, a, a big change has been um, uh, if a child's been in care basically two two years, the county can now push um, to terminate parental rights. And in my generation, to hear stories that again in my ten years of in in uh, interviewing families, oh, I spent my whole childhood in foster care. That's not good. 
Right. That's not good. We want to establish uh, personal um, relationships with with adults that are caring. And so back in those days, if if uh, birth families showed up for court every six months, well, they they're there. They must have interest. Now it's three months, and if they're not doing what the the judge, um, they can push for it. So we've had families where the the steps were they're in foster care, and then all of a sudden, again couple years into it, um, the judge says, we're going to terminate parental rights. The county then comes to Adelphi. Hey, um, this child has been in the Johnson home for this last two years. Are they willing to become a, uh, to be an adoptive family? And so we discuss that. And you know, when you're dealing with an older teen and we're 60, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah. that's, we're taking on a big thing here. Um, but, um, um, that option is provided, and and twenty families um, did it for for these children. So it's it's a tough thing to go into. Um, you know, I just want to foster. It's got to be hard. Life, uh, life is hard. Parenting is not not easy, even when it's own with your own children. Um, so to to uh, um, be challenged to um, a child was in our care, and and my whether it's philosophy or philosophic approaches. You know what? When a child is at a point in their life that they can look back and say, you know what? When I was 10, I was with Paul and Brenda, yeah. and I just know they cared for me. They provided a safe home. Things were bizarre in my life, but that time I was with them, I know I was cared for. And then whatever happened after that happened after that. Paul, thanks for very much for being on the show. Uh, if if anyone is interested in uh, becoming a foster family or a foster parent, uh, you can jump on the Delphi website. It's a d e l p h o i dot org, or call them at one eight hundred five four three kids. That's one eight hundred five four three kids. Paul Johnson, uh, Foster, an adoptive family recruiter for uh, Adelphi Village. Thanks very much for being on the show. Westmoreland uh, Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Join us next week, same time, same place, for another edition of Westmoreland Community Connections. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings in and around Westmoreland County. Join us again next week on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Westmoreland Community Connections is a presentation of the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission.